everyone, welcome back. Here, today, it's Saturday, and today, what do we do on Saturday? Isopods. That's right, we take care of all the isopods. Now, somebody asked in my members section if I could do a full isopod tour in the new year, so this is for you guys. And my daughter Paisley here, you guys know she loves her isopods. She's excited to do it today. So today, we're gonna go through all of them quickly so you guys can get a peek. Stay tuned. Alright guys, so in essence of being completely transparent with you, i got to be truthful. Since Christmas, I've been really, really sick. I went and did my testing and everything like that and it came back negative, but I was really, really sick for a while. So I think I've been kind of slacking on some of the maintenance. So you guys are going to get full raw footage of what it's going to look like when I come and take a peek at these isopods. So let's get into it. Okay, so we've got all our stuff ready to go. Paisley, what do you got? Bee pollen and dry fish. And that's food for the isopods, right? Yeah. They love bee pollen, don't they? Mm -hmm. Now we all, as you guys have seen, and I'll probably link to some of the other videos of some of the different types of foods, like fish foods and carrots and zucchini and squash and all the different things that you could feed all the different types of isopods. But today we're gonna work with some smelts and some bee pollen. We've got some, what's those white things there, Paisley? Cuddle bone. Cuddle bone, and what's that for? I don't remember. Calcium, right? They need calcium, right? And then we've got some pre-wet moss, some sphagnum moss if we need to update that. And we've got some nice clean leaves ready to go. Are you ready, Paisley? Yes. Let's do it. So this one here, all we got to do is give it a quick little feed. This one here is an armadillidium species, so this one's going to get some... Bee pollen. Right. These ones here are more of a, armadillidiums are primarily a bit more of a vegetarian species or herbivorous species. We're a detritivore, so we're going to give them a little bit of bee pollen. And uh, the substrate is still nice and moist, but we'll just give them a little bit of a water down. Now the water that we use always is reverse osmosis water, so it's nice and neutral in pH, and it's uh, completely free of any sort of mineral content and so forth or impurities. We make it here at home for our fish tanks, so we always use that, it's nice and pure. It's all about the benefit of ROs, you're never getting any scale or buildup. So that one's pretty much good to go. Let's move on to the next. The next one is this one here is another armadillidium species, and this one is known as uh, uh, Espanoli, armadillidium Espanoli. It's often called CF because it's not been 100% that this is exactly what it is, but uh, this is a, a newer colony to me, and they are doing really, really, really well. Which one did we get? So they were kind of new just before we went and gave. They, these ones will need some bee pollen, and because this one's been recently set up, it's in very, very good shape for leaf litter and content and moss and stuff, so still got fresh cuddle bones. So it really doesn't need much else for maintenance other than a bit of a spring. This one used to be called as armadillidium species, marbleized, so, and they really do like they look like they're made out of marble, but we've got all sorts of mankai in different shades of growth. So they're doing real, real well. The third one in this group, this one's really, really thriving. This one is a, is a colony I started with a very, very few youngsters, but for, for the growth I'm getting with this one is absolutely incredible. This is armadillidium fronta triangulum. And this is from Corfu. So the next one up is not an armadillidium or a Pacilio. This one is actually armadillo, and this is a Fissionalis. And this is the form from Greece. So overall, this environment's still doing really, really well. The cuddle bone's still a little bit. Maybe we'll give them another little piece of cuddle bone. That one's a little bit spent. But the leaf litter mostly is in fairly good order. And the population's doing really, really well. So this one here, we just give it a little bit of calcium. Maybe we'll give it a bit of food. These guys may be paisley. We should give them some a little bit of fish. Do you think they like some fish? Yeah, I'm going to put them back, please. What do we got here? What are these ones? This is another armadillidium species. This is one that's, in, in my opinion, is one that's often overly productive. This is granulatum. They get a fair size. They, the kind of a, a dull gray with bright yellow spots. Kind of like a poor man's version of gestroy. It's got lots of leaf litter. The moss is in good shape. I think we should give them another cuddle bone, Paisley. A big one or small? Doesn't matter. I'm gonna give them... And, let's, and then let's give them some bee pollen as well. You're very good with your isopods, Paisley. And this last one in our next row is another beautiful armadillidium species. This one's one of my favorites. 
This is the Japanese line of Armadillidium vulgare magic potion. And they are doing really, really well as well. You can see they even still have some of the lichens left over. It's a little bit drier than I'd like it to be for them. They've got some good cuddle bones, some good leaf litter. They just need some good moisture. So the magic potions, you can see there's uh, many different mankai at different stages. They're doing really, really well. Lots of different definition. And they're kind of a hard one to show up in camera to see all the different yellows and with their translucent body and their yellows and the speckles and different colors and stuff. But I find them very, very fascinating for how incredibly variable they are. I know Armadillidium vulgaris is considered by most a very, very beginner species, but uh, I do find the magic potion ones absolutely fascinating. Okay, the next one, these are pretty important ones, aren't they? Mm -hmm. These ones are Paisley's isopods. Yep. These dairy are, cows. These are the dairy cows, you're right. What do you have to feed them? They eat everything. These are a dairy cows are Porcilio, so they like a little bit more protein. Their moss is still pretty moist, but uh, they can actually, they, they probably do better. You can give them a little bit of bee pollen. They're pretty easy to feed, but uh, I think they'd also really like some dried fish. Now this culture is, uh, you know, you guys have seen the dairy cows in many videos. We have a link of actually Paisley's video of her dairy cows, and uh, they're extremely prolific. Anybody that's ever kept them, they're an ideal starter species. But uh, since we've gone and added so much, reset these bins and given all the new leaf litter and everything like that, they've just taken off again. So they are thriving in here. Mankind have many different stages and stuff, so they're doing really, really well, Paisley. Good job. Now the next one up is, is Porcilio Passii, and this is a culture that, uh, this is one of the large Spanish isopods, and they like it really dry, and they also do not like change. Well, I'm, I'm very pleasantly surprised to see how well they're doing. We've got some nice juveniles coming up of different stages. I do a few, I do see a few have died off, hopefully just older adults, but I'm actually very, very pleasantly surprised about how well these guys have adapted to the change. Which one do we have to do? These guys can take a little bit of the fish. Okay. Anything else? Yep. Just the fish. Yeah, Next one up is Armadillidium klugii, and this one here is the, the more common one that we see, the other clown isopod, and this one is Montenegro. What do we have to feed them? And these ones have always done very, very well for me. There's lots and lots of them. Let's take a closer look. Uh, the leaf litter's in good shape. The moss is in good shape. They've still got some cuddle. Uh, maybe we'll give them a new piece of calcium, a uh, new cuddle bone, and we'll give them some, some bee pollen. This is another one of the Priscilio species, and this is one of the ones that uh, kind of goes through ups and downs, kind of like Magnificus for me, where it, it, it breeds really well, and then it kind of goes through a die off. And this one has not adapted very well to the change. And this one here is a Priscilio ornatus high yellow. I have a, a girl there that's nice and obvious, and she's doing okay. See if we can get some more, see if we can find some more right now. Oh, there were some young that I just saw move quickly out of the way. Now, they could very well but also be buried down in the substrate, but as you can tell, this culture is not one of my ones that is thriving anymore. It might be just basically a bit of transplant shock from uh, changing it over and everything, but uh, because it's a Spanish species and it likes it a little bit drier, the moss has still got a, a fair bit of moisture to it. I might just give it a little tiny top up. And instead of, uh, as you've seen me watering down a lot of the different environments, this one has got that bridge from a drier area to a moist area, drier areas around here. We've still got some cuddle bone. And because there's all sorts of other things, accoutrements that are in the substrate already, because I use different things like sea soil. There's one coming out right there. And that one's a little boy. So we're still good. We're still good for our next generation. But uh, we're going to leave these ones here without any additional food or anything like that. There's lots of stuff for them to do in here. So, Priscilio or Arnatus, high yellow. The next one, Paisley. What are these ones? I don't know. Red skirts. These are the red skirts. Cubaris red skirts. Relative similar to like the rubber duckies. Now, this, well, this culture has exploded for me. This was the, the first Cubaris species that I ever did access here in Canada. I know a lot of people start off with Kubaris Marina or something like that, but uh, this was happened to be the first one that I had. Lots of leaf litter, lots of good moisture content. The next one up is uh, another Armadillidium species. This one is a very, very common species, but still a very, very beautiful species and worthy of being kept by anyone. This is Armadillidium maculatum. This is the France variant, so it gets a little bit larger, and this is the one known as the zebra. 
you can see the cut you know all, all the different woodland products and stuff i've got acorn shells they use these little hides and stuff the calcium the cuddle bone is still in good shape lots of leaf litter uh, the moss is still in good shape and this culture is doing very very well from the transition over into the new environments uh, as you can see we've got mankai of many different stages everything's doing real real well okay the next one up is a is a beautiful very very common species this is one i like this is called Porcilio scaber, very, very common species. Everybody has it. Uh, this one happens to be the koi variant. So they have a lot of different expression of different types of colors and stuff that come out in them. Very, very easy to keep. Very, very prolific. Just as easy as dairy cows. They'll eat a bit of fish. They'll eat a bit of fish flakes. They'll eat bee pollen. They're, they're pretty much a very, very easy species to keep. So let's take a closer look at them. The next one up here is, uh, is another one of my Kubara species. I got these at the same time that I got the tricolors. And uh, these ones, uh, normally I see a lot of them, uh, but today, I was in here earlier and made me kind of think, hey, I should do an update video. So this is the one enclosure that I did look into. These are my Kubara's amber. And there is one of them right here. See him, Yeah. There's one right there. I only had, I believe, eight or ten of these individuals when they originally came. Uh, and I have seen most of them on most occasions when I've looked. There's another one there just underneath the, the thing there. Oh, there's another one there. So I do know that they are in here. But uh, would I say they're thriving? No, but uh, Kubara species are also very, very slow to establish. So they often take a lot more time. Now this is one of the Kubara species that we believe to originate from limestone caves. So you guys have seen before, I'm actually using a piece of uh, dead coral, some sort of uh, fossilized coral, and this is just an absolute pure calcium source for them. And I very often see them in amongst the coral and stuff. Different types of mosses and lots of leaf litter and stuff. I'm going to give these guys a little bit more wet moss. There's lots of different food sources still in here. I'm going to give them a little bit of a wet down, and other than that, this species is going to be fine. Now I do have, I did finally get the vents for these due to all the shipping delays and everything like that. So there are still three species there, three species there that have all got to be set up. We still have, I believe, five or six of the smaller containers that you already saw. And I do have three of the larger ones. So we do have room for growth for some different species down the road, should we choose. But in the larger containers, I only want to put certain species, species that I really want to have to thrive, or those larger species. So I'll probably... The three that we've got in here so far, the first one being Armadillidium gestroi. This is probably one of the absolute largest isopods in the Armadillidium complex. And they're doing very, very well in here, but they're a very, very big isopod as you can see. Next one up is um, one of the other big ones, not the big Spanish one, this is Porcilio magnificus. This is one of those colonies, they seem to breed only once a year, and it, you can either make it or break it with that one breeding season. Mine was doing very, very well, so I've got a big boy right here. But uh, I guess in the transition, they, they, they just didn't do as well. So I've got some boys and I still have some girls. I did sell a couple of cultures off, and honestly that was probably a mistake. I do have another big girl there. There's another boy here on the leaf, or on the bark, and another girl. So I know that I've leaf's got at least half a dozen of them in here already. Uh, this one still has a very good moisture to it and stuff. Uh, this one being a Spanish species, liking a little bit drier. I leave the moisture more relegated to one side and they can migrate. And you notice that uh, I call it the Wally Kern Supreme Gecko, Supreme Isopod Bridge, where they can bridge uh, between a dry sector all the way to a moist sector without coming out in the open. So. These guys, we're just going to leave them alone, and hopefully uh, the next breeding cycle, we'll uh, get a nice, nice big new clutch. Okay, the next one is, I think Paisley thinks this is one of my favorite ones, right Paisley? What are these ones called? Hoffman Sega. That's right, these are Priscilio Hoffman Sega. But the Hoffman Sega is a nice big Spanish species, it's an ideal starter. They get really, really big, they're really, really showy. I seem to be fairly, oh no, I'm fairly balanced in the sexes. Overall, they are just an absolutely wonderful isopod to keep. The 
Now these three containers, we had a bit of an accident and I had them staged up on something else before we were planning on doing any filming and these three got knocked over. These three, however, also hold, two of them hold some of my most cherished isopods, Orsilio Bolivari, which are gonna go in a big bin, and my rubber duckies. So let's see how well they, they're, they're doing okay. Yeah, the rubber duckies, they'll be fine. They just got agitated. I see a bunch of them in different spots underneath. They just didn't like the, the being shuffled around a little bit. But uh, I'm going to give them a little bit more moisture. Otherwise, this culture is still good to go. This colony was my colony of Kubaris Lemon Blue. And they did really, really well for a long time at the beginning. But uh, they just weren't very, very prolific, normal for a Kubara species to get established. But uh, for me, dealing with wild caught adults, they all kind of went downhill all one, one after another. So I, I only have recently, prior to them being knocked over, I only recently have found one or two. And I'm assuming those one and two are still hopefully in here. But uh, this is another culture that I think, uh, I'm gonna start looking for another culture of lemon blues because we really, really enjoyed them, but not much left in there. We're gonna give them the water down. With isopods, even though you think they're all gone, especially with Kubara species, they often vary fairly deep into the substrate. So you want to make sure that uh, don't give up on them until you know, you've spent a long time looking for them. They may surprise you. This is my culture of Facilio bolivari. This is another one of my absolute favorite species. So I want to get these ones into one of those big bins. Now that the vents are here, we'll get them drilled. We'll get them set up. But for now, they're doing actually fairly well. I was actually surprised that, you know, by the whole bin being toppled over, that uh, they actually are really no worse for wear. So let's take a closer look. next one here is uh, basically my culture for dwarf whites. That's not a fancy isopod, it's not something we need to take a closer look at, but they are doing okay and I culture these mainly for use in all my bioactive vivariums. They like it fairly warm and they like it fairly wet, so they're not my best producing species that I have, but uh, they're doing okay. So I've always got them and I can always take a little pinch and put it into a vivarium. Do you want to give these guys some bee pollen, Paisley? Yeah. Or maybe here over here on the mud. these guys. This one here, the next one is Armadillidium maculatum. This is another isopod we imported from, from Europe. This is uh, Armadillidium yellow zebra. And these have been exceptionally prolific for me. They were fairly expensive to get in initially, but uh, they also require a fair bit of culling. To maintain that beautiful bright yellow, you have to really, really go through them a lot. And that's not something I really do or have the patience or time to do with all the other animals that we take care of. But I still very, very much enjoy them. Uh, if you don't do a lot of culling, that uh, bright yellow often turns to more to a kind of a lime green. And uh, maybe it's not as clear and defined as that bright yellow, but I still think they're pretty. And the last one that we have in the bin styles is another one of Paisley's. And these are oranges. This is Porcilio lavis, like the dairy cows, and this is the orange variant. So they're bright, clear orange color. And you breed them to have that nice clear orange with very, very little to define markings. And this culture is just as explosive, just as prolific as the other forms of lavis as well. And Paisley does a good job with these guys. These guys have eaten most of their leaves, so this one, Paisley, we're gonna have to give some leaves. And the last two isopods you guys might be wondering about are my Porcilio expansus. This is the orange variant. This is one that we set up in this beautiful bioactive naturalized vivarium. Now you can see that the fern has taken off. I don't know the species of fern, but that one fern has taken off really, really well. The button fern, not as well, but it's still eking out a life, so it's doing okay. We've got this awesome rotten stump here that goes right across. And I have seen some. Now, you guys remember back, there was a, there was a spider. You're going to probably see this after the spider video. But I had a, a spider opportunity that came and now lives in the lair. And you've probably seen the video, as I said. 
But uh, I was originally going to, because I hadn't seen much production going on in this tank, I thought maybe I'll go and set it up and set up the spider in this tank, because it was already theoretically already ready to go bioactive, just needed a hide. But uh, when I went and did that, I was down here at night one night, looking, and in the environment, and in the dark, they were very active, and I've seen up to eight or ten individuals at a time. But during the daytime, they are very challenging to find for me. But, as I say that, there is a bunch of babies. So we know that they are doing very, very well. Paisley, do you want to put some food here for them? Yep. Um. Very good. So that's the Porcilio Expansus. We're just going to... The one thing that I did do differently at the beginning when I was worried that they weren't thriving as well is I was often watering the entire enclosure. And I think that was probably my downfall. But now that I know they're having success, what I do is I water the ferns very, very well and more like the back half of the enclosure. When I notice that the mosses that they're growing on have gone completely dry, then I go and kind of give them a, a bit of a water. But otherwise, I just kind of water, water those two areas and it's doing very well. And the last one for today is the Mariluna species tricolor. And as you guys saw, I'll put the link in the video. I just did a video a couple of weeks back on them. They are absolutely thriving. I do have some stuff though. I am got, I've already gotten some plants and we'll be doing a video shortly on completely updating this environment. I just think it looks terrible. It looks like Death Valley. But uh, whenever I spray this environment, they come out in, in groves. And there's one right there. There's a few of them sitting right there on the algae pellet. There's a baby on that other algae pellet. You can see them all throughout here. But we're gonna give them a quick misting down and then they just come out in a flurry. But you guys can go check out that video. All right, my friends. Hope you enjoyed that. Me and Paisley had a good time. Thanks for helping, Paisley. High five. Oh, yeah. So we'll see you in the next video, guys. Take care.